Hey guys, G here from Heritage Group. Welcome back to another episode of Meeting the Driver. We're here today with Christian Reichardt and his beautiful 55 Devon. Uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about that. And uh, before we get into that, if you like our content and what we do, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you soon. Morning, everybody. My name is Christian Reichardt. I'm currently in, living in Santa Monica, California. Originally, I'm from Germany, born and raised in Germany. And, uh, you know, growing up in Germany, about 20 minutes away from Hockenheim Ring, car racing was a big thing when I grew up. Uh, then, when I actually uh, finally was able to drive a car, I, when I was a little younger, I started racing motorcycles and finally got into cars. My first car was a 1960 Chevy townsman station wagon and now you can imagine in all the small roads in germany driving with a big station wagon that was kind of an odd thing um, but it really got the car really got me started in my passion for cars um, then in the late 70s i moved to the united states and came here to malibu in 1984 at that time i was racing some motorcycles i raced a motor Guzzi. Uh, and um, more into motorcycles than cars for the next like 20 years. When racing with motorcycles on the track became a little bit too sketchy after some crashes, we, uh, a friend of mine and I, we got into racing vintage motorcycles in Bonneville and taking long motorcycle trips across the United States. After doing those treks across the United States for about 15 years, it became time for a new adventure. And uh, what intrigued me since being a kid in Germany was the famous Panamericana race, the La Carrera Panamericana in Mexico. So uh, I proceeded to buying a, a period correct race car, a 1954 Lincoln, and we did the race. But that time period of the early 50s to the late 50s in racing history, again, first kindled from my experiences with Hockenheim Ring in Germany uh, and knowing about these races and the crazy times and the crazy people that raced those cars, it kindled my passion for race cars from that time period. So uh, after a while, I thought my Lincoln was a bit big and heavy. I still have the car, still love it, but I figured I want something a little bit different. So I, I ended up with a 1957 Porsche Speedster. I loved the car, but somebody offered me a lot of money for it and I decided to sell it. And, but I had loved the, how that car was feeling, the nice, the nimble, the quick response compared to the Lincoln, which is a big behemoth. And so once I sold the car, I figured, you know what, I'm going to go and find a replacement for the Speedster. And my passion for those early race cars here in Southern California in the early 50s, there were a lot of people that worked in the engineering, uh, in the aerospace engineering world, and a lot of race car modifications from that time period were actually originated here in the United States, and particularly in the San Fernando Valley in Southern California. So I came across the story of the gentleman Bill Devon. Bill Devon was an engineer here in Southern California who was fascinated about this new material fiberglass that came around. And he was also a racer here in Southern California on the tracks. Uh, by the way, his claim to fame is he came up with belt-driven overhead camshafts for engines. That was his big claim to fame. Uh, but he had this company that was building these fiberglass bodies. So in those early racing days, in the early 50s, mid 50s, let's say somebody bought a car uh, in England or wherever to race over here and they crashed it, well, you could spend a lot of money getting the body fixed or you could go and buy a Bill Devon fiberglass body, which weighed nothing, have it put on the car within the week and go racing next weekend again with a car that now was a lot lighter a lot lower center of gravity and you could actually start winning races. So a lot of the Bill Devon bodied cars, they made cars for Triumphs, Volkswagens, Porsches, and then also built uh, full-size V8 cars. They did very well in the mid 50s. Because those cars from Italy and England, not a lot of people knew on how to fix those engines and transmissions and brakes. 
So people like Bill Devon were like the people to go to for when you had a race car like that to fix them. And one of the days uh, somebody brought Ermini, an Italian specialty made race car to Bill Devon's shop. And uh, he just fell in love with that body style and he proceeded to take a mold of that Ermini. And that Ermini mold became the basis for the Devon race cars, some of the different fiberglass bodies. And so they were made in different sizes and you could just prop them onto different size chassis. Um, I just loved that story and I thought it was just um, typical to me being born in Germany. Somebody like Bill Devin embodied the ingenuity and the inventiveness of the American dream and that you could actually go and do something like that, right? So after having sold my little Porsche Speedster, I decided I'm going to find a Devon bodied race car. And I came across on the internet uh, a car and nobody seemed to bid on it and it was kind of forlorn. It looked pretty sad in the pictures. So nobody bid and uh, ultimately I reached out to the owner and ended up with the car. I, uh, the car was on the East Coast. I talked to the owner over the phone. I've seen the pictures. I wasn't too impressed. but. I had him turn the engine over so I knew at least the engine wasn't seized. So I bought the car sight unseen and lo and behold about four weeks later the car appeared and at first I was very disheartened. But I said, you know, we've done all this racing stuff, we'll get this baby back to life. And literally over a period of like six years we brought the, back, the car back to its original glory. So during the time of restoring the car, I was able to get in touch with Craig Jones. And Craig happens to be the guardian of the Devon website. He is uh, cataloged whatever Devons are around. And uh, I think he's got over like 150 Devons that he found and connected the owners and he has a website on it. And it turns out that actually Craig, Devin, uh, uh, Craig Jones owned this Devon for a period of time. And he was able to construct the history on the car from day one. And Mr. Bill Squire built the car as a young man and, uh, in 1957. And he actually raced the car in the Midwest. And in fact, he won the junior class in Elkhart Lake, Lake Elkhart, in 1958. Then, so we have uh, the complete history on the car from when it was built on this on original Volkswagen chassis with the 356 Porsche engine and then all the way through to the owner of when I bought the car and we have a complete detailed history in it which is fantastic. Um, so coming to this point now forward we did lots of work on the car the car runs great runs like a champ uh, goes 90 miles on the freeway going and turning about 3800 rpm uh, it's a it's a joy to drive it's a pleasure to drive it's fun to carve through the canyons and uh, like I said with all the modifications and things that we did to it it's a perfectly reliable fun car it's a blast to drive so the most fun part about it is when you go through those canyons on a Saturday or Sunday morning, you've got Porsches, Aston Martins, all kinds of cars, fast, quick, modern cars. And the biggest fun I have with the car is when I chase after them and they can't get rid of me. <laughs> and I keep being in the rear view mirror, close behind them. And just to, when they start pulling to the side and I pass them, that's the most fun I have. Thank you guys for joining us on another Meeting the Driver episode. Uh, Christian here tells me that he's got a few other cars in a stable, so stay tuned. We'll drop by his man cave and check those out too. Uh, as always, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you soon.